All right, fantastic. So uh, we wanted to start with, with an icebreaker question uh, for all our, all our panelists, which is the same as the last year. So since we have this opportunity to peek inside your either your working environment, maybe your home environment, or maybe both, we don't know. We wanted to see if there is anything interesting surrounding you that you can share. Um, you have a green screen, that's already something. What do you do with those green screens? Uh, I'm actually like yeah at a at a client this week um, and um, yeah so I'm just in this in this tiny box here right now right in this phone booth. <laughs> okay, so yeah. it's uh, like you're slowly cooking inside there. Is is it like a decent temperature? <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, I just got here in a minute ago, so yeah, it's still fine, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, but the audio yeah, outside just... is terrible, so yeah. And if you have anything else, which is not the green, the green screen, but I think in the small little booth, there's nothing really that you can share. Um, let me check with David uh, if David we can we can have him for the panel. David, are you there? I think David is restarting. I don't think he, I haven't seen him come back in yet. Okay, so in that case, we'll. Uh, oh, he's we'll just go come back the... in. He's just popped back in, but he's still unmuted. Oh, there we go. So you can hear me. Yay! Yes. Oh, a classic uh, restart solves most uh, issues. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah, fantastic, David. Welcome to uh, the panel. John, take it Thanks. away. Um, yeah. So, question for David. Uh, same same one we had with Martin. What kind of things uh, are in your surroundings that uh, are interesting you'd like to share, or quirky, or anything that you're comfortable sharing with? Well, I was uh, thinking about it and came up with uh, uh, that the, the, I started practicing to drive, get a dr driver's license. The same, the same, uh, uh, actually the same month as I started to learn closure, which was uh, not uh, not yet, but almost two years ago. So, and I'm 47, so. Uh, my message is it's not too late to learn things, both like practical and theoretical things. Which do you think is easier, learning to drive or learning closure? Learning closure <laughs> was actually actually easier, even though at the beginning it was really difficult. But, you know, switching gears and keeping con track of all, all people in the streets is, is so much more difficult. <laughs> it's a very complex system. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so going back to Martin, uh, do Clerk and Next Journal share a common experience in that code from Clerk can be used in Next Journal, or are they meant to solve different challenges? So yeah, to us, kind of Clerk is is kind of a, a restart to try some of the same ideas we had in Next Journal, kind of in a in a simpler form. Um, so as it stands, they they don't share code, but we're planning to reintegrate. Um, yeah, a lot of the clerk viewers and kind of use that them as a new foundation for next journal features. And I guess also down the road, kind of integrate, yeah, make it easier to to share notebooks on clerk notebooks on next journal. And integration, better integration, is something that we'll work on in the future. And this is like a side question. I know that you collected the notebooks from the talk uh, and many others in a in a project that you wanted to share. Is is this a good time to do that? Uh, sure. So yeah, that's something. Yeah, this contains all the notebooks from my talk. Um, and yeah, there's a, a GitHub repo, so folks can play with this, um, clone it, and yeah, start playing with Clerk. Fantastic. Thank you. And uh, first question for David. Um, so we're curious about what kind of impact are on your workflow that Storyboard uh, Storybook has had. Uh, we know that David Nolan said like dev cards and Storyboard uh, were a very important change to UI development uh, for React. So just wonder what your thoughts were on that. Well, the impact for me has been, uh, I think, um, uh, the mostly a quicker, faster feedback loop. Uh, some somewhat similar similar to to the to the REPL experience, and also uh, 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 easier to like from from early on start thinking about the viewports or different devices. So so I can quickly see how a component behaves in a in a mobile device or or, or desktop uh, just by using using the uh, the Storybook UI. So for me that has been. Uh, 
they're really good. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, we do have uh, somebody with a hand up. Do we want to take that question next, Renzo? Yeah, yeah. Um, we, we, we maybe ask Andrew to unmute himself and uh, ask the question. Yeah. Hi, thanks, Renzo. Um, this is a question for David. David, I mostly do closure, not closure scripts. Occasionally, I do closure script. Um, the setup to storyboard, obviously, the results were wonderful, but the setup for someone from my background looks a little tricky. I wondered if there were any uh, automated tools or documentation or any way you'd recommend of getting into that? Uh, well, I haven't seen any automation yet for, for closure script, um, uh, but my, my myself, that's why I made an example re a repository that is on my GitHub to, yes. to, to help, to help uh, like closure script developers. But uh, mm. um, eventually you will probably end up in some JavaScript issues, uh, at least if you use different JavaScript libraries that uh, relies on like build systems and things like that. So with the from closure script to JavaScript, there, there isn't that much uh, issues that I have noticed. But when I like added, uh, uh, I think it was uh, Ray, sorry, um, material UI, uh, or was it? No, sorry, um, it was AWS Amplify that also relied on Webpack, but, but a different version. Uh, than, than storybook use so that's when i ran into some issues but the, and and solved them by modifying the storybook uh, uh, configuration but that's that's something i guess uh, that is uh, that need to be uh, that requires a, some googling and uh, stack overflowing i guess i see sometimes thank you okay thank you. thank you andrew for your question and thank you david for answering um another one for uh, Martin now uh, from Discord. We have Sam asking if you can apply a custom viewer just locally to some particular data rather than applying them globally. Yes, that's that's possible. Like we have kind of um, two functions for this kind of a with viewer and with viewers function that yeah, just applies to the following form. And the difference being like one is um, for just um, viewer for a particular result. Um, and kind of also the, like the clerk table stuff and clerk Vega light that also just applies to the to the single form right um, and um, with with viewers you could also like for a, re, a tree structure kind of modify the viewers further down the tree not just the top level so yeah the answer is yes <laughs> thanks Martin nice and question for David, I think this is a very um, specific question. Uh, so in Storyboard, can we actually get the closure script source code to appear when clicking on source? I, I think, is that for the on-click thing that you showed or is that something else? Uh, could it be the uh, show, uh, there's a button called show source yes. in the documentation. Yeah. Uh, I haven't managed yet managed, but to, to uh, do that, but I, I think it should be possible. I guess grabbing some doc, docs or metadata from closures it, itself right. and uh, stringify it uh, and put it in uh, in that custom uh, 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 sorry default export uh, map. I guess it should work, but I, but I haven't really tried that, that that one out yet. Okay, something for the weekend to experiment with. Thank you very much. Definitely. <laughs> And here's another one for Martin from Discord Fahrenheit. Uh, can you hide the utility functions in Clerk? Uh, yes, this is a feature that's currently possible in the latest main, not yet on closed jars. We'll, yeah, we'll come there next week. And yeah, you have the ability to, like for each code cell, to completely hide it, uh, to fold it so viewers can still expand it. Um, and do this on a kind of per document for the whole, if you set it on the namespace form or per form, per individual form, as well as hiding the result if you choose to. Perfect. Nice. So another question for David. Um, this on Discord, Silifin is asking, how do you approach using global state uh, stores with Storybook? Is that something you've used yourself? 
Uh, unfortunately, not a global state. Would that be state in, in the browser, like in the window object or something? Uh, that's a good question. So, I mean, when I thought global state, yeah, then I obviously thought of atoms and things like that in oh. Clojure. But um, yeah, there's also like the the browser state, the cache. Maybe the um, the person will expand on that in the comments, and uh, you can kind of catch up on that later on in the yeah. channel. It isn't something that I have actually can think of that I have actually done, but it, uh, I think it should be possible. It's just uh, JavaScript and browser, yeah. so you can do anything with it. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much. Now, um, next, a double question for Martin from Alex on Discord. The first one, are there plans to enable code editing within the notebook, not just in Emacs? And the second, how does Clerk compare to other Clojure Notebooks possibilities, VS Code Notebook or the API uh, with the Clojure Jupyter library? Um, so yeah, first the code editing within the notebook, yeah, Clerk, Clerk's kind of main idea is to, yeah, to keep using your editor, right? We we consider that to be a big perk. And I mean, we've spent yeah quite a bit of time also making a good closure editing experience within the browser um, with Next Journal closure mode. And that's what you what you have on our platform, nextjournal.com. And um, yeah, currently no plans to kind of yeah bring bring in browser editing to Clerk. Um, there's some ideas definitely about, around um, bringing direct manipulation for some things to Clerk. Um, like, yeah, some things are just faster with direct manipulation. Um, like when you have sliders to control values and then kind of write them back to the closure source code. Um, but that's kind of more the direction we're exploring. And yeah, if you want to edit the stuff in the browser, then yeah, next journal is the place I'd, I'd point you at. And, and the, the second, second question, question was uh, yeah. uh, how a clerk compares to other closure no notebook possibilities. There are a couple of examples here, but in general, also, like a VS yeah, Code. I, must say, or, I, I haven't yeah. used the VS Code notebook stuff, um, so can't really tell. Um, as to Clojure Jupyter, um, yeah, so clerk is trying to be a kind of more minimal integration, right, just as a as a closure library, so that comes with the yeah pros and cons that that follow from this. So yeah, it's it's not a polyglot system, right? Like like Jupiter, and um, yeah, I think Clerk will definitely stay this way. Um, yeah, but we we're also like working on other stuff that's that's more polyglot. Yeah. Thank you, Martin. And more questions for David. It's starting to come through a bit faster now. So um, one of the questions is, how does Storybook compare to other solutions uh, in that space? Obviously, there's quite a few options like dev cards, but there's also other libraries. So I'm curious if it's if it's kind of it seems to be more just React focused. So I'm not sure if Om and Rum are kind of. Oh, I'm not sure if like things in Rum like Rum and other libraries like that really kind of fit in. And also, like, um, is it useful for developing components like with, around CSS frameworks like Bulma or Bootstrap? Uh, so the first question, how does, does it compare to other tools? I have um, dev cards I, haven't, I have on, only uh, uh, like read about and uh, saw a presentation. And there's another tool, I think it's called Workspace for uh, developed for, for Clojure, Clojure script. Uh, I think it's very similar uh, and probably uh, as a feature, as many features as Storybook. Uh, what caught my attention is that I have a, like a, a background from JavaScript and was interested in if it could be, if, if it would be uh, possible and realistic to use uh, to like Storybook in ClojureScript. So, so that was my motivation to dig, dig a little bit deeper in Storybook. And it's also like very actively developed and like has a lot of third-party uh, add-ons and things like that, which I think is very useful. And the second question, uh, like experimenting with CSS frameworks. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I uh, haven't that, that much uh, experience other than developing component components using CSS. Uh, uh, for Storybook, I have like uh, been very isolated in 
material UI itself, and that is very code centric. So you can you do most of the things in code. Uh, you can uh, in ClojureScript you do like uh, maps uh, to define your CSS, and and that will be uh, recompiled each on each change. But there's also an option to add like global CSS to to previews and storybook. And I can I haven't really tried out what happens if we change that CSS if the storybook will pick that up. I, I would be surprised if it if it doesn't. But um, I cannot uh, say uh, I haven't tried that well, that scenario out yet. Yeah, I'm quite keen to try try it with um, CSS. I use Bulma quite a lot because it is just a pure um, CSS framework. There's no JavaScript in there, so it should be mm. pretty easy to do. I and mean, you just attach classes to your um, what your hiccup code. Uh, should be quite nice. Yeah, I think one of the things that seems different between Storybook and Dev Cards is well, you don't really need to install anything with Dev Cards. So somebody mentioned it was quite challenging to get Storybook up and running. <laughs> um, so with Dev Cards, it, it's just part. It's just the website that's rendered from your Closure code, so uh, Closure Script code. So in that sense, it's it's far easier. But it doesn't have a lot of the features that Storybook has, which like um, resizing stuff. You would have to kind of do that more manually yourself. There's some browser tools I think to do that uh, with Dev Cards. So you use the actual browser Dev tools that gives you that feature. Uh, but yeah, I think that's probably the biggest kind of noticeable difference. But yeah, thank you very much. Thanks. And we have another uh, question for Martin um, uh, Discord. Uh, do you plan to expose Vega itself or is it going to stay VL for some time? I'm not sure about the meaning of VL, maybe if you know. Um, um, Vega Light, I think it's Vega versus Vega Light. And yeah, we're I actually see. using. Um, Vega embed behind the scenes and that does support both. So, yeah, thinking about a uh, yeah naming change of the of our Vega Light function to to make that more clear. Yeah, but it's possible Fantastic. today. And back to David. So there is a question here uh, asking. Um, um, why has Amplify been used? Is it different to DevCards? I, I'm pretty sure it is. The Amplify, I assume that's the AWS Amplify yeah, library, is that yeah. right? Yeah. What does that so, bring us? Uh, well, it doesn't really have much to do with the storybook. It's uh, another JavaScript ecosystem tool that I was really eager to try out how well it works with the closure script. And it's, it's uh, I think the phrase popular phrase is called no ops uh, and that is that you can have a, like uh, uh, a browser and like a bunch of server backend cloud stuff without uh, managing your own your own infrastructure it's uh, a CLI tool where you can uh, bootstrap uh, a lot of good things so it's not really related to, to storybook but I decided to inject it in my example repo ju just because <laughs> So it's more part of the deployment side of things, is that right? So getting the site up and running somewhere. Yeah, if yeah, if you want like the persistent data storage or lambdas, and you can you can define them quite easily using uh, using uh, an, the Amplify CLI, and it will and AW the tool will uh, uh, create uh, everything you need uh, for it, like the S3 buckets and things like that too. Excellent stuff. Yes, I've, I've used Amplify briefly just to uh, publish some static sites. It's, um, it's quite simple. You just point it at something and off you go. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. So we don't have um, uh, other questions for Marty coming through. So inviting people that uh, still wanted to ask any questions to, there's still time to do that. But in, in the meanwhile, I can ask Martin if uh, he has anything else that he wanted to add that maybe he wasn't able to explain at the talk. Um, yeah, maybe it makes sense to speak a bit kind of to the future plans in Clerk. Um, of course. And yeah, so there's like three things I think um, I'm I'm looking forward to. So Clerk has this caching mechanism behind the scenes, right? Um, and this is how it makes it um, like keeps the feedback loop fast and doesn't have to rerun your whole document from top to bottom every time. And yeah, so exploring with kind of using that caching mechanism and distributing it within the team to make yeah like long running computations 
appear uh, a lot faster without everybody having to rerun it. Um, that's that's one of the things we'd like to explore. Um, yeah, then we want to make sharing easier, um, like with a small service, which, yeah, like you've seen, you can do the static build stuff, right, and put it into a bucket yourself, but kind of have a small community page where people can can share their clerk notebooks and yeah, make that really easy. And and lastly, definitely exploring a lot of the stuff like the Smalltalk community has been doing with this yeah kind of moldable development idea, like making it really easy to to customize a view to your specific problem at hand. And yeah, kind of going going further than this than kind of the what what I've shown in the talk. Um, I think rule 30, the example kind of hints at this, but yeah, I think there's, there's a lot more to explore in that direction. Nice, multiple views, it is. <laughs> um, yeah, any other question for David? Uh, yes, we have one, it's uh, possibly a bit of an open-ended one. Um, so just wondering what kind of projects you built or what kind of projects you'd like to build using Storybrook and, and uh, ClojureScript, any ideas on that? Uh, what kind of projects? So, well, I, the the one that I've been working on mainly. It's uh, fortunately it's not uh, no, uh, anything open source, but but it is uh, uh, it is a um, quite component heavy tool, uh, and 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 uh, and it's a browser based app that it should work uh, both on mobile and desktop and and things like that. So I think for that case, uh, Storybook is uh, very useful because I can zoom in to, to like a button, how it works and zoom, zoom out a bit and start building components and start to think about features and how to combine them like, like, like Lego basically. Uh, and finally, hopefully there's a full blown uh, web app somewhere released. <laughs> Excellent stuff. And, and is there a kind of like any obvious kind of challenges that you found um, that you're not even sure how to start solving, or did you do did you manage to do most of the things you wanted to do? Uh, there was uh, at first it was uh, some issues with the, the different JavaScript like tooling uh, tooling support and like different uh, versions of uh, web mainly Webpack that kind of uh, caused some uh, trouble for me and but then also uh, there were some features that were wasn't existing when I started with Storybook it existed uh, in um, Shadow CLJS but uh, thankfully Thomas Heller uh, uh, actually added some really really useful features for 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 this scenario specific like that regex support for stories and and a lot of good stuff so I would recommend to to use the latest version of, of Shadow CLJS if you if you if you use that CL, uh, setup, uh, then everything will work uh, very smoothly from the closure script uh, side. Excellent. Yes, that sounds all um, wonderful. I've, yes, I want to leave the conference and try that right now. Actually, but uh, <laughs> I've got duties to do. Um, <laughs> thank you very much. I think we have another question for um, for Martin actually. Yeah. Um, Pavel uh, is asking if, uh, given that our keynote speaker today is uh, Stephen Wolfram, um, we feel justified in asking, is there anything interesting in the Mathematica uh, space that you find interesting, possibly inspiring for Clerk? Um, yeah, I think kind of the, the ease of use and like that Mathematica has, um, yeah, is definitely an, an inspiration. Like I've used it as a, as a physics student. Um, a little bit and yeah i think it's it's really exciting that like yeah we can take sick immutals that yeah can do some of the stuff that mathematica can do obviously like yeah since it's not a a 20 year running effort or um or mathematica is even older i think we're not quite there yet um but um no it's definitely like yeah looking forward to um yeah, explore this a bit more and um, think it's quite exciting what's possible with this library today already. Nice. 
I do have a cheeky little question for uh, David. Uh, <laughs> I'm just curious uh, to know if um, if the Swedish version of Poppy Longstocking is the, the longest person's name you've heard in Swedish. It it, it has to be. I, I haven't. Uh, I can't imagine anyone having a longer name. Perhaps do you know. Do you know? Remember, remember the movie The Fifth Element? Oh yes. From yeah, you know uh, Lilu. Yes. She, she had. She had. Her real name was really really long. Oh, she yes. might have. A, <laughs> she might have a, had a longer longer name than Pippi Longstocking, but I'm I'm not sure. I better th find that out. <laughs> that's something to Google. Swedish yeah. version of uh, Lilu's full name. Yes. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. We may want to ask a similar question to Martin, but not in names. But the longest word in word in Germany would be probably beating the longest word in Swedish. I'm not sure, but <laughs> it's a cheeky question again. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure it does. But yeah, also can't yeah uh, come can't pick a specific one from the long list of German long words. <laughs> I like the I like the German name for um, kitchen because um, it's like it's like cooking pot place or something like that. As it translates, mm. we it's are normally saying which yeah isn't that long. So um. <laughs> it, it's very um, it's very descriptive of the of the of the the actual thing. It's it's kind of conveying. I think I think that's what I got from the uh, the actual name. But yes, um, I did speak a little bit of Dutch uh, many years ago, and it was yeah. There's a tendency to just join like lots of words together to just form one big big word. Uh, that was quite interesting to learn. Yeah, we definitely have that as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so we are approaching the um, like uh, the final, like the, the the last minute of the panel. Um, so we are gonna have we are gonna have a, a quick, um, no, sorry, not a quick break. We're gonna have a longer break, I think. Oh well, I'm I'm now. Yes, we're, we're we've got a thirty minute break next. Yes, um, exactly. So it's it's just to, um, yeah to decompress a little bit from the couple of talks and the awesome answers that we got from the panel. Um, thank you very much for like our speakers, both uh, Martin and David, to like put their effort and bring us some very interesting topics. And uh, yeah, we'll, I guess we'll see you all in uh, 30 minutes and enjoy some visual art. <laughs>